Watch Dogs Legion got its first massive update since the release of the online modes and well a ton was added including brand new characters, a new single player mission, co-op missions. Overall the online modes got some big changes and nice quality of life improvements and we can buy cool Aiden Pierce style masks now. So everything you need to know about the new update in this video a like would of course really help me out. And let's go. Let's start with the brand new free characters you can very easily find in the bar near your safe house. I found a DJ outside here jamming to some music and the first responder was chilling inside the bar. And you will very easily notice them thanks to their unique outfit and perks. And it is the same in online and the single player mode by the way. And these characters bring quite a lot to the table while again you can get them in the single player they totally feel built with co-op in mind. The DJ can namely buff other teammates by doing the killer beat ability. So do the ability and then all the allies nearby also get increased damage and improves their cooldown for the abilities, which is awesome. You have to pick the right moment though, because the ability only lasts for one minute and then you have to wait three minutes before you can use it again. So it's smart to do it at the start of a fight or against high health targets. The DJ also has the feedback loop ability which is great against multiple enemies. It's comparable to the watch from the spy but now for stunning enemies instead of jamming their weapon. So activating this ability stuns the enemies nearby. They get the DJ icon for a short time and they can instantly take them out. Very strong and well you already see it when taking out the enemies as the DJ. You do this unique breakdance move. The feedback loop ability is by the way on a cooldown for one minute so you can use it quite often. The first responder character has a more distinct look and actually one of the new perks as well called crash dummy which gives you reduced damage from impact. So you take less damage when hitting a car on a motorcycle for example or from an explosion and more on the other new perks you can find on characters in a moment. Now I want to focus on the exclusive ability you can only find on this character the AR medical shield which by pressing once deploys it on yourself so you can take more damage but by holding the ability you can actually choose an ally of your choice who then gets the reduced damage for 20 seconds or after a certain amount of damage. The cooldown for this ability is 2 minutes and you also have a special melee weapon but that did not seem too different from the other melee weapons we see some characters have with some familiar animations. Now this character is mostly about the shield. A shield you can by the way also do on the character Mina took over and Mina is the first out of 4 characters that is included with the season pass. You'll immediately have her in your team in the online mode and in the single player she'll be waiting for you in the pub near your safe house. Ubisoft did release a trailer sharing the story of this character about how she has been experimented on and then she got the power to take control over other people. But nothing of that is in the game sadly. Would have been cool if we had to like escape the facility ourselves. They did add a brand new season pass mission though but more on that a little bit later. Now but it's really fun to play Mina and everyone in your team can be Mina by the way. You can have clones of her running around it doesn't matter. So her thing is of course that she has this mind control device. You have to be close to a target but once you are near you can take them over use the weapons they are using and turn them against enemies. You of course still have to be careful because these NPCs die faster than your regular character so the buffs from the other characters we just talked about really help and you can also not hack while taking over a character. But it is fun to basically be using different weapons all the time. You can stop at any time if you want and take control over Mina again and then the target will just be unconscious so unable to fight. The cooldown is 4 minutes for this ability but it resets on a takedown. And Mina by the way has her own unique takedowns as well which look quite cool. There are multiple of them. And again after doing that you reset the cooldown of your mind controlling ability so you can take over other characters again. And you can call her a bit overpowered because she also has mental blast which is comparable to the DJ stun but in this case disrupts enemies so you can walk up to them and do a takedown 
and the range of this ability is way larger so really everyone in the room will be disrupted for a very short time it's really strong so if you got a tactic down you can be mind controlling enemies most of the times so you have to be careful though because if enemies find mina while you are mind controlling an enemy then that will disrupt the effect and yeah she only has shock weapons so you also want to make sure that you control enemies with better guns. If you don't like her playstyle, they can still use her outfit and outerwear on other characters, which is awesome because her outfit is really unique. We of course know that at the end of June, we will also get both Ranch and Aiden as playable characters for Watch Dogs. And then Darcy, the final character, is an assassin from the Assassin's Creed universe, which will be coming in August. But let's go back to the updates that just came out because a big thing they added is a way for us to customize the look of our characters so you can now change the hair for the male and female operatives with quite a lot of options actually you can also choose the beard to change the color as well there are a lot of piercing options just like makeup fingernails and many options for tattoos as well on the head and the body which you won't see in many cases but still, there are a ton of options. Everything does cost crypto though, so it's a new money sink for the game. Although, money is not that hard to come by. You can also spend it on the new Aiden Pierce style masks. So like masks that do not cover your whole face when carrying a gun, like Aiden Pierce. There are a ton for sale at the vending machine in your safe house. Which are all really, really cool. Something that was a bit of a disappointment though is the new single player mission that you can only play if you have the season pass. It's called a Swipe Right. In the trailer we see this awesome museum, Egypt team, but in the mission you don't really see that sadly. Fun fact is that you have to recruit the DJ so you will get this character here too. But overall it's just not that exciting. Just like the moss you get at the end. Just a recolor of a mask we already had. So far the season pass missions have added nothing substantial. So I really hope that the Bloodline expansion we get in late June is different. The new cult mission we played is awesome though. Just like the new private function when booting up the co-op playlist. So you can now play alone if you want or only with friends so also invite them after getting into the mission but yeah by using this feature at the time of this recording you always start the dysfunction mission like you never start in another mission which is kind of weird but this is one of the new missions they added though and it's pretty cool especially the ending because you go to the awesome clan kelly palace from the single player and here you have to take out two targets at the same time so they added a fun new gameplay co-op twist which I really like. But yeah, while you can now play these scope missions alone, you cannot complete all of them solo. So it's good to keep that in mind. Overall, there are three new code missions added to the online modes and also five new assignments. So smaller objectives in the open world you can only do alone. And XP for these missions, by the way, decreased to 20 XP instead of the 30 you got before the update. And there are way more XP changes for other activities. You see the patch notes right here, although it isn't always right, but more on that in a moment. The only increase is for the spider bot arena. So if you now become first there, you get a 48 XP instead of 40 before the update. The amount of XP you get for one weekly or daily challenge was also decreased, but there are now more in general. So in the end, you can earn more XP per week or day if you complete them all. In online, we also got two new gadgets that are quite cool. One is a shield that you drop on the ground, which protects you quite well against incoming projectiles. Super handy when trying to revive someone in your team as well. And you also got this Guardian drone, which when upgraded will send out these AoE blasts to disable multiple drones. And can also target human enemies and disrupt them too, so it's pretty handy. You have to buy these gadgets with influence, by the way, in the tech menu. New perks can be found on characters in the world. I already went over the crash dummy briefly, so nice for explosions and crashes, decreases your damage. We actually got a character with both the Crash Dummy and the new Berserker perk. And Berserker is awesome because you heal on an enemy kill. And this also works on drones, which is nice. Sticky Fingers gives you money on an ammo pickup. And what is interesting is that in the patch notes, these perks all have different names. 
And I also think they mean sticky fingers here because pickpocket was already in the game at launch. We see wanted here, which is likely called different in the game, but pretty bad because Albion and Clan Kelly members will immediately shoot at you when they see you. And we also got scavenger, which lets you loot and hold more ammo. And by the way, you also see a nice quality of life improvement here, where you see the amount of influence that is needed to recruit the character. So you know that before you save them to your contact list. And these perks are by the way, also in the single player of the game. There are like way more quality of life changes though, like being able to fast travel to a city event when someone already triggered it. And also nice that you unlock the shop catalog now at the safe house after going to that particular shop already in the city. So you can very easily access everything from the vending machine here. I will leave a link to the patch notes in the video description so you can read it for yourself if you want. Although again, some things are not correct. Overall though, they still got a ton of things planned for Watch Dogs Legion. We see the roadmap here. We got some PvP modes and a new tactical ops planned for later this month. I'm not sure if they're gonna hit it, but yeah, I hope so. When we know more, I will of course let you know here. So totally subscribe for way more Watch Dogs Legion content if you haven't already. A like on the video would of course really help me out. And totally check out my previous Legion video by clicking on the screen. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.